it was uncommon for ships of the Axis powers to serve in more than one navy. These ships generally remained in their original fleet, with a few notable exceptions, such as a couple Italian submarines that managed to serve in all three major Axis navies. The focus of today's video, Luigi Torelli, was one of them. This submarine began her life in the Regia Marina before finding herself in the German fleet after the Italian armistice. And then, after Germany surrendered in turn, she spent a few months in Japanese service. By the end of the war, the Italian submarine was operating with an eclectic mix of German, Italian, and Japanese sailors for her crew. Let's take a look at how, exactly, things came to that point. Laid down on February 15, 1939, Luigi Torelli was one of the Marconi class. These were some of the most modern and most successful Italian submarines of the war. Displacing around 1,200 tons on the surface and 1,500 tons submerged, they were roughly equivalent to the Type 9 U-boat. Although the Italian boats were a tad bit heavier. On this displacement, the Marconi class carried eight 21-inch torpedo tubes, four in the bow and four in the stern, along with a single 4-inch 100mm deck gun and a handful of machine guns. This could move through the water at 18 knots on the surface when running the diesel engines, and about 8 knots when submerged, running off of battery power. With that rounding out the technical details, however, Let's move back to service history. Torelli was launched in La Spezia on January 6, 1940. Her commissioning followed on May 15th of the same year, with the result that she was still working up when Italy entered the Second World War in June 1940. This did mean she didn't immediately join the war, although this would come soon enough. Because when France fell, it opened up Atlantic ports for Axis submarines. The German use of these ports was the more famous by far, but the Italians assigned several of their larger submarines to the port of Bordeaux. Torelli would be one of the first, departing for France on August 31st, 1940. She would arrive in Bordeaux on October 5th, ready to join the war after a short war patrol. That being said, her second patrol from Bordeaux ended in complete failure. She left port on December 11th, 1940, before having to return on the 21st with serious electrical issues. Such serious problems, in fact, that it took a month to sort them out. It would keep her in dry dock until January 1941. On the other hand, Torelli's third war patrol would be far and away her most successful. She left her French home behind on January 5, 1941. This patrol took her off the Scottish coast, where the Italians found a small convoy on the 15th of January. Torelli's commander maneuvered his submarine well, picking a prime firing position. Torelli's torpedoes sank two ships in the first attack a Greek freighter, the 5,200-ton SS Nemea, and the 4,079-ton Norwegian steamer, SS Brask. The next day, she followed up on that by sinking a second Greek steamer, the 3,111-ton SS Nicholas Philinus. My butchering of the Greek language aside, this is one of the most successful single attacks by any Italian submarine although it is worth mentioning that none of the individual ships were particularly large, and a fourth ship, while damaged, managed to escape into stormy weather. Nonetheless, this was a great success for what was, in the end, a very new crew and submarine. The patrol wasn't done yet, either. On January 20th, Torelli attempted to hit three destroyers, but her torpedoes failed to hit the targets. I imagine she'd be much more famous had that attack succeeded. That being said, Torelli would find further success on the 28th of January when she sank her first British target, another 5,200-ton freighter, the SS Erla. This brought her total to four ships sunk and about 17,600 tons of shipping. 
not a bad haul for her first successful patrol. After sinking Erla, however, Torelli returned to France for shore leave and to restock her torpedoes. She arrived on February 4th, 1941. At this point, her captain and second-in-command were replaced, which probably did not help Torelli on her upcoming fourth patrol. That lasted from April 1941 through to May 11th off the coast of Scotland and Ireland. No ships were hit, and the submarine duly returned to port for refit and restocking. A common theme with Italian submarines, for better or for worse. As for Torelli, she would set off on her fifth war patrol on June 29th, 1941. This time, the operational area was off the coast of Gibraltar, much closer to her Mediterranean home. She did not, however, enter into the Mediterranean. The Italians remained in the Atlantic, hunting for any worthwhile targets. On July 5, 1941, she found a convoy. Unfortunately for the Italians, this convoy had an escort, and they made an attack impossible. The same situation followed on July 7th, with the exception that this time, Torelli had to evade attack by the escorts. At this point, things were shaping up to be another failed patrol. However, Torelli's luck would turn around on the 21st of July. A Norwegian tanker of 8,900 tons stumbled into the Italian site. This ship had the misfortune to be sailing alone. The Italian submarine did not hesitate and sank her in a night attack. Then it was back to France for the usual rest period between patrols. The next couple would prove to be less than ideal. Patrol number 6 began on September 7th after a short rest in port. This saw her return to the waters off Gibraltar alongside other Italian submarines. Torelli would fail to hit anything on this patrol. She attempted to on September 21st, 1941, firing a torpedo off against a merchant ship, which only succeeded in drawing the attention of British escorts after failing to hit anything this forcing Torelli to submerge and evade. The submarine's luck would hold out, at least when it came to evading attack. She avoided any damage at this point. Sadly for the Italians, their bad luck would also continue. Alternatively, it was bad leadership. Torelli attacked the same convoy not long after the depth charging ended on September 22, 1941. This was equivalent to poking a hornet's nest as her torpedo failed, and the exact same British escort attacked once again. The crew of HMS Vimy were probably bemused and annoyed in equal measure at this point. As for the Italians, they were probably just annoyed. The second failed attack led to actual damage to the submarine. Vimy's depth charges did some damage to Torelli, and forced her to stay underwater long enough to nearly run down the battery. Nonetheless, her luck held, and the submarine survived the bombardment. The damage was severe enough to force a return to port, however. When those repairs were complete, the Italian submarine was put to use on a rescue mission in December 1941. Specifically, on December 5th, she was sent out, with other Italian submarines, to rescue the crew of the auxiliary cruiser Atlantis. They met up with the Germans between December 14th and December 18th, allowing the transfer of survivors from smaller submarines to the big Italian boats. Between them, the Italians picked up about 260 survivors from German U-boats and carried them to France. This came during her seventh patrol, which led to no successes on that patrol. The rescue mission also delayed Torelli from her eighth patrol. That came in the new year, after modifications to allow her to operate off the American coast. Torelli departed, with modifications in hand, on February 2nd, 1942. This took her towards the French island of Martinique as a final destination. It would also, as it turned out, be her last successful war patrol, if you count actually sinking something as a successful patrol. The Italians ultimately sank two more merchants during this action. First, on February 19th, another British steamer. 
This was the 7,224-ton SS Scottish Star, which was sent to the bottom with torpedoes and the deck gun. And then, after arriving off Martinique on the 24th of February, the Italians began to patrol. This led to the final kill for Luigi Torelli on February 25th, 1942. This was also her largest kill in the form of the 9,200-ton tanker Esso Copenhagen. With that ship sent to the bottom, Torelli's final tally rose to 7 ships and 42,968 tons. Not a massively successful career, but also not a terrible one either. In any case, Torelli would ultimately depart these waters and return to France, arriving in Bordeaux on March 31st, 1942. This is where things would go drastically wrong for the Italian submarine. After her usual refit period, the boat set sail on June 2nd, 1942. She was intended to operate off the American coast again, but would never reach her destination. Torelli was spotted on the night of June 3rd by an Allied aircraft. A Vickers Wellington, equipped with the new Ley Light, found the submarine off the Spanish coast. This equipment was, in basic terms, a searchlight mounted to the plane. This would illuminate hostile submarines right before they were lost on the new and short-ranged radar that was also mounted on the bomber. The intention in doing so was that the submarine would not have time to crash dive as the bomber used the light to drop its payload on target. Torelli had the misfortune to be the first submarine targeted by this combination of radar and searchlight. After missing the first bombing run, the Wellington circled around and dropped four depth charges. Torelli would prove to be fortunate in that she did not sink during this attack. The depth charges went off beneath her as she dived and caused serious, but not fatal, damage. As the Wellington departed, Torelli began to limp towards the Spanish coast. Not that this was particularly easy. Her diesel engines malfunctioned, the rudder and compass were temporarily out of order, and chlorine gas filled the battery room. Nonetheless, the submarine was able to slowly make her way towards Spain where she promptly ran aground because the crew was navigating by hand. This could have ended very poorly had Spanish tugs not turned up to pull her off and tow her to safe harbor. Of course, while Franco was no friend of the Allies, Spain was ostensibly neutral. Torelli couldn't remain in Spanish waters for long. She was beached near a port and emergency repairs were conducted. By June 6, 1942, enough repairs were made to set sail, but not to submerge. As a result, Torelli was attacked again soon after leaving the port. The submarine was forced to limp back to Spain for a second time. The battered Italian boat was beached for more repairs. This led to her becoming something of a political sore point between Spain and the Allies. They accused the Spanish of giving the Italians too much leeway for a neutral power. The Italians fired back that the second attack had been in Spanish territorial waters. In any event, the second set of repairs lasted from June 8th to July 14th. Torelli had been very lucky to survive the second attack. This picture of the submarine in dry dock in Spain demonstrates that rather handily. Now, it's important to note here, staying over a month in Spain was really pushing the neutrality laws to their breaking point. In fact, when Torelli left dock on July 14th, the Spanish were fully intending to tow her into the inner harbor to intern the submarine. The Italians pulled a fast one, however. They asked to make a turn to see how Torelli handled after the repairs, which just so happened to let her slip past the tugs and out towards open sea. The Spanish harbor defenses didn't open fire, having been caught completely off guard. And the Spanish officers aboard the boat were set overboard onto a fishing boat as Torelli made her escape to France. By July 15, 1942, 
she was safely home and ready for proper repairs. It was quite the journey, and one of the great success stories of the Regia Marina's submarine arm. However, the damage was so severe that Torelli required six months of repairs, in addition to the repairs she had received in Spain. This kept her out of the war until 1943. Torelli eventually left France again on February 21st, 1943. The intention was to sail to Brazil for another war patrol. As it turned out, this was a repeat performance of her last attempted patrol, aside from the Spanish adventure. On March 16th, the Italians were attacked by three PBY Catalinas. The damage from this forced her home once more, at which point her combat career came to an end. Because, with the need for further repairs anyway, Torelli was chosen for conversion to a transport submarine, one of seven Italian boats chosen for such a conversion. These large submarines were seen as fit for that role, especially for voyages to the Far East. However, not all of them would make the trip. Torelli left for Japan with four other Italian submarines on June 14, 1943, with two of them lost soon after the departure. Two further transport conversions were trapped in France in the general chaos of the Italian armistice. That left three submarines, including Torelli, to reach Japan. Torelli was, at this point, no longer fit for combat duty. As part of the conversion, the deck gun and torpedo tubes were removed, with the latter space converted to fuel storage. The submarine was, in the end, only barely capable of defending herself with machine guns, and completely unable to engage in the traditional submarine mission. In that condition, the Italian boat arrived in Singapore on August 31st, 1943. When the Italian armistice was announced on September 8th, Torelli's Italian crew was sent to POW camps. Some of them would eventually return, agreeing to serve under German command. With the new name UIT-25, the Italian submarine would engage on patrol and transport missions for the remainder of 1944 and into 1945. She escaped any major damage, while generally living a quiet life in her inability to actually fight other ships. Until, that is, the surrender of Germany in May 1945. At that point, UIT-25 changed hands once again. She was captured by the Japanese on May 10th and commissioned into the IJN as I-504. The Combined Fleet website says that no Japanese crew was assigned to her, but I've seen references, as mentioned at the start, to the submarine operating under a joint German-Italian-Japanese crew. Believe what you will there, but regardless of her exact crew makeup, the submarine would basically stick around Japan for the remainder of the war, during the course of which her crew, evidently, claimed to shoot down a B-25 Mitchell close to the end of the war which is, allegedly, the last success by any Axis naval vessel in the entire war. In the end, whether that happened or not, I-504, ex-UIT-25, ex-Luigi Torelli, was surrendered to the Americans at the end of the war. After studying the submarine, the Americans scuttled her on April 16, 1946. So ends the story of Luigi Torelli. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.